Today I want to talk about one rule that sounds very simple but very hard to do, and a lot of people already heard about it. But somehow, somewhere, it's tricking people. This rule is: cut your losses and let your winner ones. Cut your losses and let your winners run. Now it sounds very simple. Yeah, if you do trading and you see small losses, always take them. Take the small losses, and then when you have winners, let them run. Let them run for as long as it takes. But it go against the grain of human thinking, because, like for example, um, you drop a ten pounds note and somebody took, somebody saw it. You know, not immediately, but you know, somebody just found on the on the on the street. You don't expect that same ten pounds looks going to be there next five ten minutes, because you sort of expect you know naturally thinking that somebody later on who come after you might take it. So you constantly just you probably most likely just pick him up and put in your pocket. Now you do you put that into into trading, you put into、uh, let's say for example you you trade down Jones, and you、uh, buy, open a buy trade, and the market go in your way and make some money, and、uh, let's say a hundred pounds or I don't know, fifty quid or some some something, and then you start thinking during oh, I better take this.、Uh, Otherwise, you know, I may, I may lose.、Uh, some, you know, the the market may turn around and buy your butt and then take away your hundred quid. And、uh, I mean, it, it make make it make it make it even bigger. Make it five hundred pounds or a thousand pounds. Most people just take it. The problem is that go against the rule. What I just said. Let the winner once. In the market, you never know what happens. You could end up with the winners end up to be a loser. But so long as you control your loss, it, it you know loss can be very small. But if you let the winner runs every so often, the winners really turn into winner. Now I think I mean that there, there's some by book some I read before.、Uh, I think it's Mario Lynch or some somebody、uh, learn to trade or something. No,、uh, Peter Lynch,、uh, the Magellan Fund. He always talking about two baggers, ten baggers, you know, twenty baggers. Well, basically, you know, one pound turning into twenty pounds, or one pound turning into ten pounds. Those kind of、uh, investment, but those don't comes for few. Those comes few and far between. They don't come often, but you must follow the rule to let the winners run. If you, if your investment is making you money, let let it continue. So long as it hasn't gone back and buy your butt, you know, let 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 it run. And this is also、uh, this is what 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 very different from let's say forex trading. I mean nothing against forex trading. Some people that I read and and follow in Twitter and on YouTube as well. They they always say profit target, profit target. You know you 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 risk one pound to get three pounds or five pounds. But then they forget the outliner. Sometimes those large wins can give you one pound return, give you ten pounds back. And people forget about that possibility. Always just take, you know, one. Let's say you consistently have a one to three ratio. You know, you risk one pound to get three pounds. When you get three pounds, you get it. You basically just stop yourself out from the trade, which is a good process. It's a good win. However, you always limit your win to a three to one ratio, and you have to do a lot more often. But you also basically left money on the table. Some trades sometimes do. Happens to become big trade, big wins for you, and one or two of this, if you can catch it and catch it consistently, can make your losing year into a a winner. Now let's take the whole thing on its back. Losses, you know, cut your losses. Many people always think, I mean, I, me included when I first started. You know, if I lost, let's say, a pretty fine value, I say before I go to trade, I say if I lost ten pounds on a bet, or a trade, or a hundred pounds on a trade, I say uncle, which basically say, well, that that that's my pain point. I get out. I don't care. But a lot of time when I was first starting, 
out, I found myself not following that rule. Basically, I let uh, I will let the stop loss, so to speak, you know, a bit loser, give the the price, the share price or whatever index or forex I'm playing with uh, at the time more breathing room, so to speak. And I found myself sometimes, you know, the the price, the share price come back, and ooh, I make some money. But a lot of times, I mean, also on, on the reverse, some of this could have could turn out your trade could turn out to be a big loser. And it could loss more than your predefined value. If you don't watch those, you basically damage your account, and not just money-wise, also damage your sanity, your emotional state. And a lot of people don't talk about it. You know, cutting your losses, you know, quickly, it's not just helping you survive from your trading account term, but also help you your state of mind, so you don't mess you up. Just think about it. Yeah, thousand pounds account. Do a spread betting like when I first started, I started at five thousand or a couple of thousand. Sometimes depends on the account size. And I lost hundred quid. Initially, I said hundred or fifty quid. That's enough. But then it turned out I lost two hundred, three hundred, or maybe a thousand pounds. That's how I blew up my account. Because always, you know, human thinking. Oh, if I give a breathing room, it will come back. I lost something. It will come back. I lost my key, my car key. I found that later on. I lost my dog, or the cat. It, oh, finally, so it come back. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do. But this is a normal mindset that we have in normal life, you know, day to day running of life, and we're hoping and hoping, you know, things will come back. Sometimes they come back. But that hoping, if you put it in share trading, can kill you, kill your account basically. And sometimes you basically end up getting. Large losses that you never planned for. So this this is the type of problems that you know human thinking is you know going not following the rules because it's going against human nature. And also a lot of people don't follow rules anyway. Don't have a rule. They don't even want to follow any rule. They just go and buy, uh, let's say Google, and hope they go up. You know, just like buying a lottery. They they spend, these people. This is this is. I read it somewhere. People in general spend more time searching for a TV or fridge, or furniture. Than they actually trade, on Apple, or Google. They just put the money there. They don't put any research. They don't even check. They don't have a plan, and they just go and play, and they lost lots of money. Yeah, like one of the the podcast, the first podcast. I say you you know, you need to. Or one, the first couple of one. You need to make sure that you treat trading as a business. As a business, you plan, you think, you don't just go in. And that what makes a difference by following your rules, because this is a business, and this is simplest rules that has been talked about a lot of time. Cut your losses and let your winner runs. In trend following, the way I see it is. We follow that rule to the T. Basically, we have an uncle point. Basically, it's like no matter how big my account is, I don't lose more than one or two percent. That's it. That's all. If I lose that amount in any single trade, get out. Basically, that's protect me, account wise, so that I can still got chip on the table to play the next, the next trade when the signal my、uh, system comes and give me the signals, and I can still have money to play. But not often talked about this. It's not just protecting of your money account, your trading account, but also your emotional account. I think Dan Pena talk about this. You know, yeah, emotionally, if you lose lots of money, it mess you up. It does mess you in state of mind, and you cannot think. And the next one you might, the next trade you might, you might take might not necessarily fall in the system. You do some people what some people call refund trade. I lost money in Google. Oh, I'm going back to Google, and I'm gonna make Google pay. I'm gonna make him to pay, make it to pay me back the money. But if the market there's nothing to to pay you, there's no trend. You're forcing the market. You end up losing more money. Okay, but all these bad habits comes out because your emotion is not balanced, not calm. 
he's not following the plan very jittery you know and you just go into the market because you're in a state of nervousness you know anger and that may cause us a lot of problems so basically as a trend follower or any trading you need to follow this simple rule it's always rule number one cut your losses and let your rain runs and Warren Buffett talked about it people asked him before I remember I read it somewhere or some of the podcast what's your the best reading advice to uh, for traders for investors don't lose money and second rule is follow rule number one don't lose money so when it translates to trading in, in share trading and trend following I just basically follow this simple rule cut your losses you have to lose one way or another you're buying a product in this case uh, a share you have a plan but the market may not give you what you want might just do something else so you cut your losses when your market go against you up to a predefined level let's say one or two percent that's it normally I just go one percent if something really really nice trade I have a nice setup then I might go two percent but that only happens if is there's a large enough you know, uh, very, a lot of signals showing that the trade is good but normally I would do my I would say 80 percent most of the time I would just stick with one percent and that helps me financially to keep my account my trading account available for next trade but also emotional account to give me a balanced mind so I can trade properly then take the next trade which a lot of people don't you know follow this rule and secondly is why have a profit target it's beyond me I mean once you learn about the internet about trend following you, you, you're riding a trend the trend can go anywhere and you every time you really hope it go to the moon and basically you say okay I only take it up to you know third floor but the ball the, this trade can be like a rocket go straight to the moon and you only went to the first floor or let's say you know to, to high rise building 20 floor up but it's going to the moon the problem is you don't know so people just take the profit but like big uh, black swan event you know things unexpected both go both ways some of it can hurt you accounts why but some of it can also you know make you lose some money black swan event okay the big the big outliner event like you have a target profit you match yourself up because in trading just like in our business you incur a lot of losses alright you're playing the probability games the large number uh, the law of large number which I will talk about later on in the future podcast but you need one or two of this big large um, what you call an outliner event that pay for large win that pay for all the small losses cover them and them some so for, for me in trend following anyway I don't have a profit target I basically just follow the trend if the trend is still up I just continue it doesn't matter if it's you know my original target is uh, let's say you know, let's say I come from a, you know one let's say I have a one to three ratio you know waste 10 pounds I'm expecting a 30 pounds coming back yeah I mean I, I basically I, I used to do that before I do trend following I basically take this out out of the window I just say no that's not the thinking I want because I want to follow the trend the trend could sometimes you know give me you know 5 to 1 ratio 20 to 1 ratio but if I cut myself short I say 3 to 1 ratio I left money on the table the problem is because I'm playing probabilities I, of trade I do not know I mean, share trading basic probabilities to me I will not know if this trade I'm on will actually pay you know end up be a 10 bagger you know 10, 10 times the money or five times the money or two times the money or one times the money or 50 times the money I don't know but I just have to have to let the event to play out so that if it is an outliner I reap the benefit of a 20 bagger you know 20 to 1 50 to 1 10 to 1 if it happens and only you only need a couple of this a year to make lots of money for you so think about this ladies and gentlemen you know as, as, a, as a trader as a new beginner think about this cut your losses 
and let your winner run is one of the basic rules that you must follow, no matter what type of system that you use for trading. So that's the end of this podcast. And uh, if you find well, all these things, all the podcasts I've said so far is uh, beneficial, please subscribe to my podcast on whatever channel you found it. And um, if you want to have a quick chit chat with me, just to you know discuss what you want to do with uh, with trading or how I may help you, able to help you. Um, just um, um, there's a link on the description of this podcast, and just. Uh, Ping, ping, ping me, ping me an email. They say, "Oh, I need to use your name and an email, and I come back and talk to you on on Zoom call, uh, ten, fifteen minutes, no problem." Okay, there's no cost involved on here. I'm just here to help you, and see if I can you know, point you in the right direction, some strategy, some books, whatever, just just to help you along. Okay, and uh, thank you for listening, and I will uh, hopefully speak to you soon. Bye bye.